Okay, good morning everybody. Uh, thank you very much for uh, inviting me here. So I will start off with a, a very brief introduction on uh, vascular ehlers danlos <laughs> syndrome and an introduction um, into the new criteria that were published indeed in 2017. So vascular ehlers danlos syndrome or VEDS uh, was previously known as EDS type 4, but we don't uh, use that anymore. So it's a rare autosomal dominant condition that is caused by pathogenic variants in the COL3A1 gene, and that's the gene that encodes type 3 collagen. The prevalence is estimated between 1 in 200,000 and 1 in 50,000. Type 3 collagen is uh, one of the major fibrillar collagens, and it uh, mainly co-localizes with type 1 collagen and it's mainly present in uh, elastic tissues such as skin, blood vessels, lungs, liver, spleen, uterus and the gastrointestinal tract where it uh, makes up about uh, 10 to 30% of the total collagen. And so in the arterial wall, it is mainly present in the tunica adventitia. Uh, not that much actually is known about the exact role of type 3 collagen uh, in the extracellular matrix, but a few old studies, mainly uh, electron microscopy studies, have suggested a regulatory role in determining uh, the collagen fibril diameter. Type 3 collagen, uh, as I said, it's a major fibrillar collagen, and so it consists of three identical alpha chains, and so these alpha chains, they wind uh, around each other to form this triple helical uh, structure. And uh, so the main triple helix is flanked at the amino terminal and the carboxy terminal uh, sites by uh, propeptides, which are cleaved off during maturation of the collagen molecule. And so very important, um, within the triple helical domain, every third amino acid is this yellow one here, the smallest glycine residue. And it's very important that uh, this is the case uh, to form the structure of the triple, the triple helix. And as we will probably hear in the next talk, uh, most of the mutations that we find in type 3 collagens are mutations that lead to substitutions of uh, one of these glycine residues. So uh, up until 2017, uh, the clinical criteria that were used were the ones uh, that were de uh, defined in the Villefranche nosology. Um, I have not uh, recapitulated them here, but the major clinical criteria for vascular EDS and the Villefranche were excessive bruising, a thin translucent skin, um, a typical facial appearance, as we, still, we will see later during this talk, and then arterial gastrointestinal or uterine rupture. Um, in 2017, uh, a new international classification was published for all the different types of Ehlers-Danlos syndromes, and uh, the major and the minor clinical criteria were uh, revised and they were published in the American Journal of Medical Genetics, Part C. And so I will uh, list here the major and the minor clinical criterion. The first major criterion now is a family history of vascular EDS with a documented causative variant in the COL3A1 gene. However, we have to be careful uh, because about 30 to 50 percent of probands actually have no family history and uh, the mutations are de novo. The second one is arterial rupture at young age. Um, so uh, this arterial rupture may be preceded by an aneurysm, uh, fistula or a dissection, but it may also occur spontaneously. Um, two large uh, studies that are listed here um, have looked at the sites, uh, the main sites, and so most of the arterial ruptures uh, are uh, ruptures of middle-sized, uh, medium-sized arteries in the thorax and the abdomen, but also in head and neck and in the extremities. The clinical presentation uh, depends on the location of the arterial event and so unexplained acute pain uh, in pa patients with vascular EDS uh, warrants immediate medical uh, attention. 
and chest pain or symptoms of a heart attack may point uh, to coronary artery dissection. And then also other rare cardiovascular complications include ruptures of the corda tendine uh, of the ventricle of the heart. The third major criterion is spontaneous perforation of the sigmoid colon in the absence of known diverticular disease or other bowel pathology. So indeed, most gastrointestinal perforations occur in the sigmoid colon, however, perforations or ruptures can take place everywhere in the gastrointestinal tract. Uh, iatrogenic perforation during colonoscopy uh, has also been reported. Bowel rupture is rarely lethal, uh, uh, only 3%, um, and with most deaths reported as a result of a hemorrhage or an artery rupture during surgical repair. The fourth major criterion is the uterine rupture during the third trimester in the absence of a C-section uh, and or severe peripartum perineum tears. And then the fifth one, which is perhaps rather infrequent but very specific for vascular EDS is the carot carotid cavernous sinus fistula formation in the absence of trauma. So those were the five major criteria according uh, to the new uh, classification. And then there is also a list of minor criteria that are perhaps uh, less um, specific uh, but can also add uh, to the clinical suspicion uh, or suggestion of the diagnosis. So I've listed them a bit uh, together. The, the first one is in the skin, so uh, bruising unrelated to identified trauma or in unusual sites such as the cheeks and the back. We have to be careful though, excessive bruising is something that you see throughout um, all the types of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome and it's so it's not because a patient bruises easily that it's necessarily also a vascular EDS. Uh, then uh, patients with vascular EDS do not have the typical hyperextensible skin that we see in other types of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome but um, here they have a thin, usually translucent skin with increased venous uh, visibility. I don't know if it's clear here on this picture. Um, then they uh, can also have acrogeria, which is an old uh, appearing aspect of the skin. This hand, for instance, uh, here that's uh, from a 20 year old boy with vascular EDS. And then we also see early onset varicose veins uh, under the age of 30 and uh, in um, nulliparous uh, females. Then here you can see the typical uh, facial appearance or Madonna-like appearance, it's also called, with uh, quite prominent eyes, a thin and pinched nose, uh, thin lips and also uh, earless, uh, lobeless uh, ears. Um, these uh, pictures here are all quite obvious um, appearances of vascular EDS. However, it's not in all patients that you so clearly uh, see this typical uh, facial appearance. So you have to be careful, you can miss it. Then um, club feet, congenital hip dislocation, uh, hypermobility of the small joints and tendon and muscle rupture can also occur in vascular EDS. And then uh, other minor criteria include spontaneous pneumothorax, keratoconus, and uh, gingival recession and gingival uh, fragility. So those were the minor criteria for vascular EDS. Um, a recent study uh, from um, France has looked at the accuracy of the uh, new diagnostic criteria in a group of 519 uh, patients, including uh, 384 probands and 185 uh, relatives. And they have also compared uh, to the, uh, the accuracy of the Villefranche criteria. And so the conclusion was that the Villefranche criteria provide accurate detection of symptomatic probands uh, in a specialized practice, but they have limited uh, specificity. And um, the revised diagnostic criteria have increased specificity, but its overall performance is poorer, mainly, mainly due to lack of sensitivity. And an early clinical diagnosis of probands without family history is not addressed by both diagnostic uh, classifications. 
So also in relatives, uh, the performance is uh, poorer than uh, in pro bands. So uh, there is still a, a way to go to try to identify uh, patients uh, before they have major complications or uh, when there is no family history of um, vascular EDS. So as it is uh, stated in uh, the paper uh, on the clinical criteria, minimal criteria that are suggested for vascular EDS include a family history of the disorder, arterial rupture or dissection uh, under the age of 40 years, an unexplained sigmoid colon rupture and spontaneous pneumothorax. When these occur, especially if there is presence of other vascular EDS features that are listed in the minor criteria, these uh, should all lead to diagnostic molecular studies to establish uh, the diagnosis. And so, as uh, it has already uh, uh, been pointed out, uh, in the absence of a major vascular complication or a gastrointestinal complication, even for an experienced uh, clinician, the diagnosis of vascular EDS may be difficult because all the minor features um, can be also quite subtle. So if there is a uh, suspicion of vascular EDS, molecular conf confirmation of the diagnosis is warranted. And so uh, this can be done by sequence uh, analysis of the ColtRA1 gene. And this is very uh, sensitive regardless of the technique that is used and is thought to identify over 98% uh, of affected individuals. And so it can be done still single gene analysis by Sanger sequencing. I think uh, most of the labs now use multi-gene analysis of a gene panel that includes the ColtRA1 gene or whole exome sequencing. You can also do whole genome sequencing uh, with the advantage that this uh, technique will also detect deep intronic variants that lead to splicing uh, alterations that could be miss missed by the other techniques. And if there is a strong suspicion uh, of vascular EDS and uh, sequence analysis does not identify the causative uh, variant, then an exome array may be considered to detect multi-exome deletions or duplications that cannot be detected, like I said, by sequence analysis. And uh, so as a way of introduction, um, these were the criteria for vascular EDS and I would like uh, to thank uh, the EDS Society and the members of the International EDS Consortium uh, uh, and mainly uh, Peter Byers uh, who uh, leads the vascular EDS committee within the consortium for establishing these criteria. And I'd be happy to take questions. Thank you.